Good day, beloved of Christ. Welcome to prayer on Wednesday, the 27th of March, Wednesday in Holy Week. Let's begin with a deep breath. Try to sit and fill our lungs as best we can. Exhale and open our hearts to the divine presence. Incline your ear to me, make haste to answer when I call. Together, incline your ear to me, make haste to answer when I call. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Together, make haste to answer when I call. Hide not your face from me in the day of my trouble. Together, make haste to answer when I call. You, O Lord, endure forever, and your name from age to age. Together, make haste to answer when I call. You will arise and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to have pity upon her. Together, make haste to answer when I call. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Incline your ear to me. Together, make haste to answer when I call. Psalm 55, verses 1 through 6, then verses 17 to 20, 23, and 24. The psalmist laments to the Lord and trusts in the Lord as well, being a great example to us once again of offering our heartfelt complaints and sorrows to the Lord, yet all within the context of a deeper trust. Give ear, O God, to my prayer. Do not ignore my plea. Pay heed to me and answer me. I am tossed about, complaining and moaning at the clamor of the enemy because of the oppression of the wicked, for they bring evil upon me and furiously harass me. My heart is convulsed within me. Terrors of death assail me. Fear and trembling invade me. I am clothed with horror. As for me, I call to God. The Lord will deliver me. Evening, morning, and noon, I complain and moan, and he hears my voice. He redeems me unharmed from the battle against me. It is as though many are on my side. God, who has reigned from the first, who will have no successor, hears and humbles those who have no fear of God. Cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous one collapse. For you, O God, will bring them down to the nethermost pit, those murderous, treacherous men. They shall not live out half their days, but I trust in you. Let us pray. God of grace, when we are frightened and alone, help us to trust you and cast our burdens upon you, that we may be upheld by your saving strength. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now, Lamentations chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. This details the destruction of Zion in the judgment of God. The Jewish Study Bible comments that in this section, God has made his holy temple into an abomination. Abomination is elsewhere linked with idolatry, something to be shunned by Israel. It is a true saying that we become what we worship. Here Israel is judged for their idolatry and have become an abomination in themselves. Lord, have mercy. This lament is read during Holy Week as we lament the destruction of our Lord upon the cross. Lamentations 2. Alas, the Lord in his wrath has shamed fair Zion, has cast down from heaven to earth the majesty of Israel. He did not remember his footstool on his day of wrath. The Lord has laid waste without pity all the habitations of Jacob, He has raised in his anger fair Judah's strongholds. He has brought low in dishonor the kingdom and its leaders. In blazing anger, he has cut down all the might of Israel. He has withdrawn his right hand in the presence of the foe. He has ravaged Jacob like flaming fire, consuming on all sides. He bent his bow like an enemy, 
poised his right hand like a foe. He slew all who delighted the eye. He poured out his wrath like fire in the tent of fair Zion. The Lord has acted like a foe. He has laid waste Israel, laid waste all her citadels, destroyed her strongholds. He has increased within fair Judah mourning and moaning. He has stripped his booth like a garden. He has destroyed his tabernacle. The Lord has ended in Zion festival and Sabbath. In his raging anger, he has spurned king and priest. The Lord has rejected his altar, disdained his sanctuary. He has handed over to the foe the walls of its citadels. They raised a shout in the house of the Lord as on a festal day. The Lord resolved to destroy the wall of fair Zion. He measured with a line, refrained not from bringing destruction. He has made wall and rampart to mourn. Together they languish. Her gates have sunk into the ground. He has smashed her bars to bits. Her king and her leaders are in exile. Instruction is no more. Her prophets, too, receive no vision from the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Behold, a great mystery here. The wrath of God poured out. We'll just have a moment's quiet. Our second reading, 2 Corinthians 1, verses 8 to 22. But I call on God as witness against me. It was to spare you that I did not come again to Corinth. I do not mean to imply that we lord it over your faith. Rather, we are workers with you for our joy, because you stand firm in the faith. So, I made up in my mind not to come with you with another painful visit. For if I cause you pain, who is there to make me glad but the one whom I have pained? And I wrote as I did, so that when I came I might not suffer pain from those who should have made me rejoice. For I am confident about all of you that my joy would be the joy of all of you. For I wrote you out of much distress and anguish of heart, and with many tears, not to cause you pain, but to let you know the abundant love that I have for you. But if anyone has caused pain, he has caused it not to me, but to some extent, not to exaggerate it, to all of you. This punishment by the majority is enough for such a person. So now instead you should forgive and console them, so that they may not be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow." So I now urge you to reaffirm your love for him. I wrote for this reason, to test you and to know whether you are obedient in everything. Anyone whom you forgive, I also forgive. What I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, has been for your sake in the presence of Christ. And we do this so that we may not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So what's happening in this letter? Remember yesterday, Paul was defending himself against the accusation that he was vacillating, saying yes and meaning no about returning and a visit to the Corinthians. Here he speaks more about this proposed visit, and he says that he decided not to come because it might cause further conflict and further rebuke by Paul of the behavior of the congregation. He laments, I come to you to bring my joy and to find my joy in you. Why would I come to visit if it will only end in sorrow among you? Through personal pain, he wrote a, a fierce letter of rebuke of the congregation that caused him much sorrow. And yet the congregation received it well. And the individual, not named here, and we don't know their sin or offense, did come in some way to repentance. And so healing and restoration has begun. Paul instructs the congregation in verse 8. So I urge you to reaffirm your love for him this one, the offender. May the Lord grant us good discernment so that we know when, if there is a wrong behavior toward us, we have the discernment to know when and how to respond in a way that will hopefully bring restoration and healing. The power of forgiveness is true and real and life-giving. May the Lord make us eager to forgive 
and courageous to seek reconciliation. Now to our prayers. We pray for the coming of God's kingdom. To the call, Father, by your Spirit, please respond, bring in your kingdom. You sent your Son to bring good news to the poor, sight to the blind, freedom to the captives, and salvation to your people. Anoint us with your Spirit. Rouse us to work in his name. Father, by your Spirit, together, bring in your kingdom. Send us to bring help to the poor and freedom to the oppressed. Father, by your Spirit, together, bring in your kingdom. Send us to tell the world the good news of your healing love. Father, by your Spirit, together, bring in your kingdom. Send us to those who mourn, to bring joy and gladness instead of grief. Father, by your Spirit, together, bring in your kingdom. Send us to proclaim that the time is here for you to save your people. Father, by your Spirit, together, bring in your kingdom. Father, work through us, unworthy as we are, to bring in your kingdom of mercy, justice, love, and peace. Empower us by your Spirit and unite us in your Son, that all our joy and delight may be to serve you, now and forever. Amen. Gathering our prayers, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the peace of God, which passes understanding. Keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier, and fold you in love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Wednesday.